டோர் அடிச்சிடு மலர் டோர் அடிச்சு ஹலோ சார் கேன் ஹியர் மீ சார் மிஸ்டர் சாந்திலால் ஹலோ Hello. Hello, can you hear me sir? Mr. Shantila? Hello. So, good evening. Voice is clear. Yes, sir. Good evening. So, welcome to all once again for my class. Last class, I had discussed with you about representing control devices in that capital two hand expansion valve. low side float valve high side float valve automatic expansion valve thermostatic expansion valve is completed in that remaining two items that is one is electronic expansion valve and level master control today i will discussing with you about electronic expansion valve and level master control so these are the different types of expansion devices last last we discussed about capillary tube system hand expansion valve automatic expansion valve low side float valve high side float valve thermostatic expansion valve today now we are going to electronic expansion valve this is exv electronic expansion valve and another one is lmc level master control before going to this just we are review about the last day's class so capital to be say expansion valve used in small systems like refrigerator water cooler water cooler deep freezer it is a continuous small diameter tube one end is connected to the outlet of the dryer 
and another end is connected to the inlet of the evaporator. So through passing rough end in this small diameter tube, at the end of the tube, the volume is increasing and pressure is decreasing. In this way, small system the pressure is reducing. That is capillary tube system. And in hand expansion valve, generally used in ice plant, cold storage, like that system, hand expansion valve is also known as a manually operated valve because it is operated by manually. A operator is required to operate the valve according to load, heat load. So it is known as a hand expansion valve or manually operated valve. Another we are explained automatic expansion valve. This work depends upon evaporator pressure and maintain a constant pressure in the evaporator. So automatic expansion valve is also known as constant pressure valve. And it maintains a constant pressure in the evaporator. So it is known as constant pressure valve. Then another is the Float wall controls, two types of float wall controls are using in a refrigeration system. This low side float wall, another is high side float wall. Hello, clear? So there are two types of float wall controls are using for the tight evaporators. One is low side float wall and another is high side float wall. Low side float wall is using in low side of the system and high side float wall is using in high side of the system. Screen share.
some distance is happened. So two types of photo wall controls. One is low side photo wall, and another is high side photo wall. This low side photo wall generally located on the low side of the system, and the high side photo wall is located in the high side of the system. With respect to the evaporator, front or temperature based, the flow is maintaining in low side photo wall. And this high side float wall, when condensation increases, evaporation also increases. On that base, more liquor often enters into the float chamber, and this ball moves upwards. By that, opening will be more, and more liquor often flows into the evaporator. In this way, it is maintaining. And thermostatic expansion valve. This thermostatic expansion valve working based on evaporator. Temperature and maintain a constant superheat at the last coil of the evaporator. So it is also known as constant superheat valve. Maintain a constant superheat valve. Now we can go for new two items. One is electronic expansion valve and level master control. First we can go. what is electronic expansion valve and explain the construction and working of electronic expansion valve that we can go first later what is level master control and explain its construction and working so this is the sketch of electronic expansion valve it is a refrigerant control device work based on pre selected constant suction gas superheat so this valve also worked on the base of pre selected uh, constant suction gas superheated and it regulates this valve also regulates and modulates the refrigerant feed according to law that means suppose in air conditioning in air condition room having a low that means starting time when the system is starting at that time the heat load will be more after one hour or two hour by running this system the load will be reduced so by that increasing or decreasing the load this electronic expansion valve continuously regulates and modulates refrigerant into the system and this uh, electronic expansion valve consists of a microprocessor based control that is a important part in this system having a microprocessor based control system in that two sensors are available in this system one is uh, fitted on the last coil of the evaporator and another is fitted on the suction line of the compressor cylinder so two sensors are providing one sensor is fixed sensor means thermistor that is fixed on the outlet of the evaporator and another sensor is fitted a suction line of the compressor cylinder by that two sensors and sensing the temperature difference on the base the microprocessor taking the signals and that signal is sending to electric motor next is another one part will be there electric motor and why this electric motor is using this electric motor operating the valve the valve having a orifice and a spindle or needle will be there that orifice is increasing or decreasing or the flow will be increasing or decreasing with the help of needle and this electric motor this motor is a type of stepper motor so this is the parts internal view of a electronic expansion valve this uh, electronic expansion valve consists of motor first having a motor that motor is known as 
stepper motor that's motor is known as a stepper motor stepper motor means this motor is not run continuously or very fastly they are controlled an electronic controller and rotate a fraction of a revolution of each signal sent to them by the electronic controller by that base only the valve is opening or closing so here having a stepper motor this is a stepper motor then just below having a lead screw this part is known as a lead screw then next is ps piston sleeve this is known as a piston sleeve then having a orifice assembly here having a orifice assembly then a inlet and an outlet so these are the main parts of a electronic expansion valve first motor motor means stepper motor this stepper motor worked based on the microprocessor microprocessor means uh, in microprocessor if two signals are receiving one signal is coming from evaporator outlet temperature and another is compressor suction cylinder suction line cylinder of the uh, temperature sensing and that signals are coming to microprocessor and sent to this stepper motor on the base the motor is moving very slowly step by step it is rotating on the base this lead screw moves uh, in rotating motion on the base this piston sleeve moves up and down motion so the main parts are stepper motor lead screw orifice assembly with piston sleeve and then inlet and outlet in this another one adenoid is it's a difference is that it senses and control the suction gas superheat at the entry of the suction gas to the compressor cylinder already i explained the sensor will be there that sensor also sensing or receiving the ten, uh, temperature of the suction gas to the compressor cylinder and this orifice of the valve here having orifice see one round you can able to see here orifice will be there orifice of the valve is a series of finely machined small slots on the circumference of a circular orifice assembly over which a piston sleeve rides up and down motion see you can able to see here here one hole you can able to see here having series of uh, finely machined small slots on the circumference of a circular orifice assembly here this piston sleeve ps this piston sleeve uh, rides up and down motion this uh, sleeve moves up and down motion for regulating the reference flow for changing operating conditions the orifice size is varied by the up and down movement of the sleeve over the orifice assembly that means when this motor is rotating that means the uh, stepper motor is rotating the lead screw also rotating this lead screw convert rotary motion of motor into linear motion of piston sleeve the, so the piston is moving up and down motion okay and this motor is uh, rotating a circular motion so this circular motion is converting to linear motion linear motion means up and down motion up and down motion so, so this linear uh, lead screw the function of lead screw is to convert a rotary motion of motor to linear motion linear motion means up and down motion on that base this uh, piston is moving up and down on that base this orifice is increasing or decreasing by that the flow will be increasing or decreasing here sleeve this sleeve 
fixed sleeve or piston sleeve this sleeve is moved over a comparatively longer stroke by a motor whose circular motion is converted to linear up and down movement of this sleeve by the lead screw already we are explained this is the lead screw this lead screw convert uh, rotary motion of or circular motion of motor to linear motion that is up and down by that the motor moves in steps and has a fast number of steps. these steps are get from signals of inner outlet temperature and another one sensor also fixed that sensor is fixed the cylinder compressor cylinder suction side by two signals are getting in microprocessor and send the signals to this motor on that base this motor moves in moving a step by step motion on that base the piston sleeve moving up and down motion with the help of this lead screw the long strong of the sleeve over the orifice and large number of steps ensure a very close and accurate regulation of orifice size and thus the reference flow even for a small range of load variation that means see now the system is started by starting 5000 kilocalorie heat will be there for example 5000 kilocalorie heat will be there by that the system is starting with a particular size of orifice and flow will be a particular quantity of reference after 10 minutes 100 kilocalorie heat will be reduced by the reduction of 100 kilocalorie heat this sensors sense the temperature and it give to microprocessor and it sent to this motor then the orifice will be varying now the orifice will be varying by that regulations a small variations is happening and on the base the reference is sending to the evaporator so a smaller change also it will accurately sense and supply reference to the evaporator the motor operation see this is the motor electronic expansion valve electronic expansion valve one motor will be there that motor already we are explained that motor is known as stepper motor so the motor operation is controlled by micro process based control so this is not a ordinary motor this is a electronic motor and this motor working based on micro process based control system will be there in that two thermistor temperature sensors are installed one location in the evaporator outlet and the second location in compressor suction passage passage just before the compressor cylinder so these are the two locations one location at the outlet of the evaporator and second location means compressor cylinder suction side so these are the two locations of these two thermistors okay then this thermistor sends the temperature of suction temperature of the compressor as well as evaporator outlet temperature but in last class we are explain about the thermostatic expansion valve the, that thermostatic expansion valve also sensing the temperature where the, it has a feeder bulb there is a feeder bulb the feeder bulb is sensing last coil of the evaporator only one sensing with the on the base it is working but here in electronic expansion valve two sensors are available so two from two different points the temperature is sensing on the base it flow is going so the difference between two being the superheat of the suction gas as it enters the cylinder and it controls the operation of the valve
Electronic expansion valve controls the superheat of the suction gas as it enters the compressor valve. So here in electronic expansion valve having a filler bulb, expansion valve top having a filler bulb and capillary tube, the filler bulb sends the suction gas that means at the outlet of the evaporator that is sens sen sensing here thermostatic expansion valve controls only the suction gas superheat at the evaporator outlet where the filler bulb Hello? Clear? One second, I'm repeating from this second point. Thermostatic expansion valve controls only the suction gas superheat at the evaporator outlet, where the filler would be mounted on the suction line there is no control on the superheat of the suction gas as it enters the compressor cylinder, which ultimately influences compressor performance. Now clear? Screen share is clear? So once again, this is repeating. This working of electronic expansion valve. Electronic expansion valve controls the superheat of the suction gas as it enters the compressor cylinder. So in compressor cylinder, having a sensor. That sensor sends the temperature of the compressor suction cylinder that also entering to the microprocessor but in thermostatic expansion valve only the evaporator outlet, that means suction gas superheat at the evaporator outlet, where the filler mount is mounted that temperature only sensing another feature of electronic expansion valve is that it can limit the evaporator working at saturation temperature to not exceed 13 degrees centigrade or in other words to the corresponding saturation pressure in chiller application this helps the system to start at a higher chiller fluid temperature without overloading the compressor motor so I am concluding this uh, electronic expansion valve very shortly. I am concluding how to construct and work. See here the main parts are on this motor. That motor is stepper motor and having a lead screw, then piston sleeve, orifice assembly, inlet and outlet. Here two signals are coming. These signals are processing by microprocessor and the sensor location is one is outlet of evaporator and another is suction line of cylinder of the compressor. So these two temperatures are sensing and the microprocessor processed and signals is sending to the motors. On that base, the motor is worked by step by step. Then the lead screw converting uh, circular motion to linear motion of the piston. That means the piston.
clear? Screenshot clear? So some signals are going to cut some disturbances dis coming. This is the working of electronic expansion valve. So it is a roughen control device used in refrigeration and air conditioning system. Nowadays, in VRV or VRF air conditioning system, the electronic expansion valve is using as expansion device next is level master control this is another type of expansion valve this is the modified version of thermostatic expansion valve first i am little bit explain with the thermostatic expansion valve this thermostatic expansion valve having a feeder bulb, capillary tube, bell or diaphragm already we are explained yesterday in that volatile substance is filled and feeder bulb is clamped to the last coil of the evaporator. Then what happened? The feeder bulb sends the temperature on that base, the volatile substance changes to liquid or vapor state by that the stem is moving up or down motion, then valve is opening or reducing on that base flow is going. This is also almost 70 80 percent similar to thermostatic expansion valve. Here, additional in this thermal bulb, we are attached by a small voltage electric heater. So, here it is coming a electric heater. That is the main difference is coming in level master control. So it is a throttling device or expansion device used in hundred chillers. That means bigger chillers we are using, and it is a modified version of thermostatic expansion. It is an advanced version of thermostatic expansion valve in that feeder in feeder world is involved with a electric heater the electric heater is a small volt voltage type electric heater this is the sketch of lmc level master control i will explain with this sketch here it is coming liquid that means after condensation the liquid line is coming so this point is liquid line and this is dryer strainer. This part is known as dryer strainer. And this is known as level master control. See, now you have to identify it. This is LMC. So now location is identified. Okay. So here, a feeler bulb is fixed. This is the feeler bulb. Okay. This feeler bulb fixed here. Here itself, a uh, heater also will be provided. That is electrical lines for LMC. For operating LMC, a heater is required. Small voltage heater is required. That heater is incorporated with the, this feeler bulb. Okay. So, in your know, heater required electrical supply. So, now we have to see here it is there. And here I am, shut off valve also will be provided. And this is flooded chiller. And this chiller having liquid roughness. So here liquid will, roughness will be there. This liquid is going to this line. So here the feeler bulb is fixed in the line. Like where, where the line of this chiller line. So here chiller having liquids. These liquids are taken to this line. So here, this line is filled with the liquid referent. In that liquid referent, we are fixed the feeler bulb of the uh, LMC. Then one electric heater also fixed here. Clear? So this is the inlet, then dryer strainer, 
and this is the LMC. Then uh, this so this is the inlet and this is outlet. Outlet is connected to the chiller. This is the chiller. So the liquor offender will be enter into the chiller and the top having liquid and this liquid also reach to the this line. This line consists of filler bulb of the LMC with the a small voltage heater, electric heater, and this line is controlled by a shutoff valve. Here, a valve will be there. This valve is controlling. What is the function of this valve? So, anytime you want to repair or maintenance of heater or filler bulb, at that time you can close this line. At that time, the rubber will not go outside. Then, in in uh, thermostatic expansion valve, you have learned a equalizer. Like here also, a equalizer will be there. This is the equalizer connection. That equalizer connection is connected to the uh, below of this diaphragm as well as it is coming to one point is coming to this line. So this is the concession of the uh, level master control. So once again, I'm repeating. So here it is starting liquid line, and this is a, a, a dryer, and this is LMC level master control, and this is outlet. Outlet roughen flows through the through the chiller. Then here having a line. In this line, this liquid roughen entering. This line having a filler bulb and electric heater that electric heater is a small voltage for operating this filler bulb and here having a shut off valve and additionally a external equalizer connection also provided in this lmc okay. here some points we can discuss roughened paper cannot get superheated in flooded chiller okay dry type evaporator will be there Flooded type evaporator will be there. In dry type evaporator, after evaporation, last coil, vapor roughened is passing. That vapor again absorbs heat from the roughened space. Then the vapor is superheated. But in flooded, it is not possible to superheat because this chiller is filled up full of liquor roughened. So here, superheating not possible. That's why the filler bulb, we have to heat it. For heating the filler bulb, we are providing a small voltage electric heater. Then only the, it will be heated on that base, the bellow will be expand, then the stem will move downwards, open the valve. Okay, so roughen vapor cannot get superheated in flooded chiller the heat necessary at the filler bulb for opening the valve. Okay, so for opening this valve, which is required, heat is required. Okay, so for getting heat, we are providing a heater in filler bulb. With the, uh, with the help of this heater, we have to heat the bulb, heat the bulb, filler bulb. By that, the pressure is increasing and opening the valve. The sensing bulb is switched in the chiller. So this the our here also a sensing bulb, filler bulb. Sensing bulb is known as filler bulb. This filler bulb is fixed on the chiller, so as have direct contact with the roughen. So here, which is coming roughen, this line having roughen. So it is located at the level at which liquid level has to be maintained during this operation. So this is the liquid level. This liquid level having a line. In that line having liquid roughened. The liquid roughened reaches to the filler bulb and heater. The level maintained should be such that it submerges the chiller bundle. So this is known as chiller bundle. This point is known as chiller bundles. Here the level should be maintained. Now how to work? When level liquid level is below the sensing bulb, this is the level. Understand? This is the level. So now the liquid roughened below this level, what happens? The
the heater will be heated more why because there is no liquid of front okay normally this liquid entering this line and if this heater is heated the heated carry and that heated heat carries away the heat from electric heater at the relatively slow rate that means the liquid refund will be in this line so when this heater is heated the refund is carrying this heat now what happened the level is decreased refrigerant level is decreased when refrigerant level is decreased what happened the heater is heating at that time the refund cannot able to carry the heat at that time what happened this bulb also more heating when more heating this valve will open more and more liquid refund flows to the chiller okay so the aim is when level will be decrease liquid level will be decrease heating of the heater will be more by that valve opening will be more and more liquid refund flows into the chiller then reverse when chiller level will be increased now level will be increased by increasing of level the liquid enters to the this line now what happened when this heater is heated the liquid refund absorb this heat and here temperature will be less by that the opening will be less and less flow into the chiller that means the chiller level liquid flows down this lmc admit more refund to the chiller and when level will be increased level means liquid refund will be increased it allow less refund to the chiller like it will be increasing or decreasing and maintain the level in the chiller so when chiller level rises and comes in contact with the bulb the heat generated by the heater is carried away by the liquid refund at a much faster rate this will reduce bulb temperature and valve get throttled okay so the main aim of heater is heat the bulb of the lmc when heat is more the valve opening will be more when heat is less the valve opening will be less how the heat will be less when valve opening will more more liquid refund enters the chiller and liquid enters to this line at the time the heater is heating that heat is absorbed by this refund and temperature will be reduced and this uh, uh, lmc flow will be reduced in addition to this this valve modulates and flow of refund and maintain a steady level in chiller it is of an external equalizer type this lmc bulb is equipped with a specially screwed fitting with a gasket for fixing it directly into liquid level pipe provided on the chiller this is the liquid level pipe this liquid level pipe having lmc bulb lmc bulb means filler bulb then a shut off valve is provided in the liquid level pipe this is the shut off valve to facilitate the service of lmc power element or bulb without the necessity of removing the refund from the chiller suppose if you are filler bulb required servicing or electric heater required servicing at that time you can close this pipeline with the help of this shut off valve then the refund is not coming this side then you can able to remove this filler bulb 
for electric heater for servicing and maintenance purpose and reference shut off valves this is a reference shut off valves are half way blob valve type the valve should be fixed its hinge in horizontal valve so the valve can be fixed in two position vertical position that is up and horizontal position so here the valve is fixed in horizontal position to avoid liquid trapping and faults level in the liquid level pipe in liquid level pipe uh, faults level or liquid trapping to avoid that we in the uh, valve is fixed in horizontal position and the heater is wired in parallel with the compressor motor so here heater is there this heater is uh, connected parallel to the compressor motor so this is under sketch of uh, flooded uh, lmc this is lmc and uh, side view and this drum and this is the liquid level in this liquid we are inserted this filler bulb this is a dry type dry type wrapper okay then for draining out oil in ammonia system we have to remove uh, um, in ammonia system ammonia is not mixed with the referent at that time we have to separate uh, uh oil okay so for moving oil a uh, drainage connection will be there and this is a suction line so once again i am repeating this uh, level master control so condenser will be there after condensation liquid line will be there the liquid line reaching to the dryer strainer and this is a level master control this level master control this point is inlet and this is outlet outlet is connected to the chiller okay so chiller having liquor of one that liquor of one having a level by that a pipe also fixed in that pipe having a shut off valve and filler bulb and electric heater the function of electric heater is to heat the filler bulb when heating the filler bulb what happened the valve is lmc is opening or closing depends upon heat of the heater okay and this heat will be increased or decreased and the filler bulb heat will be increased or decreased depends upon level of the referent in the chiller suppose in chiller the referent will be less what happened uh, the heat will be more at that time more heating is doing by that more opening more often flows into the chiller when more often reaches to the chiller that refund is entering this pipe and further heating this refund is absorbing this heat and reduce the temperature of the filler bulb by that it reduce the purifies and reduce the flow okay so in level master control is controlling the level in the chiller with the help of this filler bulb and this small voltage heater i hope you understand how this will work and in connection with the is all not wall also i would explain now what is all not wall and then how it is constructed and how it is work and application of all not wall this is not coming in expansion devices this is another one device sold out valve we have to control the flow in liquid line so now we can observe what is sold out valve sold out valve is a electrically operated valve a electrically operated valve which allows the refund to pass through it when it is energized and stop the flow of refund when it is deenergized so normally hand operated valve will be there that's a manual operating valve in manual operating valve by our hand we are opening and closing the line instead of that this electrically by electric it is opening and closing so top here top having a sol node coil that sol node coil is connected to the supply to 240 voltage single phase a coil will be there when that coil is magnetizing instead of having a spindle this spindle moving up and down motion on that base 
a orifice will be there the orifice is a opening or closing so when it is energized or in when it is deenergized at that time this valve will be open or closed here an arrow will be there this arrow showing outlet and opposite side having inlet so soldered valve is a electrically operated valve which allows the referent to pass through it when it is energized and stop the flow of referent when it is deenergized then we can see the main parts of soldered valve this soldered valve can suffer first main part is soldered coil this attachment is coming soldered coil that is a coil electrical coil like water winding pipe then having a spring here it is coming a spring and sender having a plunger outside of the plunger having a soldered coil that coil is a single phase okay and we are giving supply the coil is energizing when it is energizing the plunger moves upwards when it is uh, when supply will cut when it is deenergizing the plunger moves downwards by this spring action here having a orifice and both sides having an inlet and outlet generally this is a, in refresh system liquid line we are fixing to prevent the flow of referent when the system is in off action so here the main parts are soldered coil this area will come soldered coil then this part is known as spring and this is known as plunger this plunger moving up and down motion due to the energizing and deenergizing of the soldered coil on that base this orifice will be open and orifice will be closed and here having an inlet and outlet then a body also available then working how it is work so when supply is giving to this coil the coil is energized when coil is energized the plunger moves upwards at that time it will open either refrigerant or gas or any other in vacuum purpose also we are using then the orifice is open and it allowed to flow when it is deenergizing that means it is off what happened the plunger moves downwards by its weight and close the line and with the pressure of spring it not it not be open then application where this are using it is used to control the liquid line in commercial rs refrigeration and air conditioning system to stop the return of liquid from evaporator to compressor and that is it is used for controlling the branch liquid line to each evaporator when one condensing unit is used with many evaporators for maintaining the different temperature that means some system having one condensing unit with two three evaporators and these evaporators having different temperature one is 10 degree another is 5 degree another is minus 5 degree so different temperatures we have to maintain in different area at that time in each line of evaporator inlet we are providing a solenoid valve so whenever not occurred with the help of thermostat we can close the line so in branch circuits of evaporators we are using a solenoid valve like commercial system liquid line that means when compressor off when compressor stop immediately line also will be stop then referent is not going to evaporator or suction side at that time starting is very easy otherwise what happened more liquid referent reaches to the suction side and pressure will be more and starting is difficult for that purpose we are using a solenoid valve or hand valve in liquid line to stop the line in addition to this it is used in bypass
it is used in bypass line and its compressor capacity and defrosting system hot gas bypass defrosting system in that we are using the solenoid valve in bypass line and it is used in vacuum pumps to take care of vacuum in case of power supply failure in sudden that means uh, in vacuum line suction line we are connecting this solenoid valve and connect to electrical supply suppose uh, when reached in a particular vacuum suddenly the electrical supply is failed what happened uh, immediately we have to break the line otherwise the air will be entered totally the failure is happening to prevent that we are using a solenoid valve in back to pump suction line these are the applications of solenoid valve so i hope our new expansion valves one is thermos uh, electronic expansion valve another is double master control electronic expansion valve is work based on a microprocessor and a stepper motor then a piston sleeve and lid screw with the help of this it is working that means in electronic expansion valve two sensors will be there the sensor sends the temperature of evaporator outlet temperature and compressor suction line temperature of the cylinder two two temperature are sensing and giving to microprocessor on the base the stepper motor moves by step by step by that piston sleeve is moving up and down on the base it will be opening or closing like level master control is a advanced or modified version of is a modified version of thermostatic expansion valve how the thermostatic expansion valve work similar is working but here additional is main additional is a electric heater a electric heater is incorporated with the filler bulb and this line pipeline is connected to the chiller level okay so when level is decreases heating will be more and the valve is opening more and more liquid will flow to the chiller when chiller level will be increased the heating will be decreased by that the uh, temperature also will be decreased and flow will be reduced in this way the level is maintained so these are the two additional new uh, controls one is electronic expansion valve and another is Double master control. These two are different control devices. Then, additionally, we have learned a solenoid valve. Simply, we can tell solenoid valve. We have to control the line. A manual valve will be there. By manual valve, we can open or close the line. Instead of that, electrically operated valve. I hope today topic will understand. so if you have any doubts you can call me i will be available in another one hour you can contact me or you have any feedback you can hmm, whatsapp me i hope you will understand so i am stopping this section thank you